Would you like early access to my videos? Then please support me on Patreon. Click the link below. Thank you. Also, be sure to leave a like. It only takes a few seconds and I really would appreciate it. Thank you. The Commodore 64 had a lot of quality software in its lifetime, but there was one company that was head and shoulders above the rest. Epic Software had a vast assortment of titles, but was primarily known for its sports games. And boy oh boy were they good. There were a total of 8 games in the game series, and that's what we are going to take a look at today. What superhero theme song is in one of these games? What was the original title of California Games? So put on your suntan lotion and get ready to surf because this is the history of Epic's The Game series. Epic Software got a start back in 1977 doing Dungeons and Dragons style turn based games. In 1983, the company released Jumpman, one of the early platform games for the 8 bit line of computers. This was a massive hit for the company, so they decided to switch to action games instead. In 1984, Thanks to the brouhaha for the 1984 Olympics, Summer Games was released for the Commodore 64. This was designed by Scott Nelson, who had been a programmer for the Atari 2600 add-on, the Starpath Supercharger. For those of you who don't know, this was a little scene device for the Atari 2600 that expanded the capabilities of the system. One of the titles that Mr. Nelson worked on was a track and field clone called Sweat. As you can see, the graphics are very nice with three layers of parallax scrolling and smooth character animation. Mr. Nelson took this concept and rewrote it entirely in assembly language along with five or six other programmers. The finished product became Summer Games. This was one of the first games to use an actual graphic artist which would explain why everything looks so good. The animation in particular is really well done and is a joy to watch. The events include Pole Vault Platform Diving The Relay Race 100 Meter Dash Gymnastics Freestyle Relay 100 meter freestyle and skeet shooting. Each section features its own control method with either frantic joystick waggling or complex timing moves. This was one of the earliest computer games to feature simultaneous two player action on a single computer. A large selection of countries are available each accompanied by their own flag and a musical sample of their national anthem. The best times are saved as world records, providing motivation to keep practicing. The game was a huge success and sold over 200,000 copies and paved the way for Summer Games 2. The developers felt that the Summer Games concept was done and wanted to move on to Winter Games. The problem was, by the time development on the game was over, it would be just in time for Summer so they opted for Summer Games 2 with 8 brand new events, many of which were proposed for the original game. The game was released in mid-1984, just as the Olympic Summer Games were taking place in Los Angeles. If you happen to own the original Summer Games and are using a Commodore 64, you can combine both games and compete in 16 events instead of 8. Not only do you get opening ceremonies, but you also get the closing ceremonies as well. The list of events include Triple Jump Javelin Throw Rowing Equestrian High Jump Fencing Cycling and kayaking. The controls for this game are much better and more thought out with only one joystick breaking event and that is cycling. My absolute favorite game in the series is up next and that is Winter Games. Taking everything they learned from the development of Summer Games 1 and 2, 
They integrated the gameplay into the winter environment perfectly. The list of events include Hot Dog Biathlon Figure Skating Ski Jump Speed Skating Free skating and the bobsled. Epic Software keeps raising the bar when it comes to graphics and animation. The beautiful bitmap winter scenery is simply amazing considering they only had 16 colors to use. Once again, this game was a massive hit, but it seems as if they were out of Olympic events. After some serious brainstorming, they decided to do an event that encompassed the world called World Game with eight brand new events that would represent each country. The eight events include Weightlifting from Russia Barrel Jumping from Germany Cliff Diving from Mexico Slalom Skiing from France Log Rolling from Canada Bull Riding from the United States Caber Toss from Scotland and Sumo Wrestling from Japan Once again, the graphics and animation are top-notch and are even better than the previous game. There was even an ad for Continental Airlines, which was the first of its kind. In late 1986, the team did not know where to take the series. Programmer Matthew Household was vacationing in California when his wife suggested they do a game on skateboarding. He thought this was a great idea. It was the mid-80s, and extreme sports were just starting to emerge, so a BMX minigame was chosen along with a half-pipe skateboarding game. They wanted to include something for the girls, so a frisbee game and a roller skating game were suggested. The first proposal that Mr. Householder submitted actually skewed much more extreme than the eventual finished product, including windsurfing, hand gliding, and parachuting events that were all excised in favor of some more sedate pursuits like frisbee and hacky sack. This was the first game in the series to feature a massive marketing campaign including giveaways. This was also one of the first games to include paid advertisements in the game, including Ocean Pacific, Casio, and Spin Jammer's Flying Discs. The original title of this game was Rad Games, but was changed later in development to California Games. One of the developers said they spent far more time developing this game because so much money was being spent on the marketing. They had created versions of this game where all of the girls were nude. They also had a little bit of blood and gore in the game, but all of these elements had to be toned down. The events include Half Pipe, Foot Bag, Surfing, Skating, BMX, and the Flying Disc. The sprites have been beefed up and are huge compared to the previous games in the series. The animation is still well done though, especially the surfing and the water effects. For the first time, the game also licensed the music for Louie Louie which plays in the title screen. During the BMX event, depending on which version you're playing, the 1966 Batman theme can be heard. This was the best selling game in the series, selling over 300,000 copies in the first nine months alone. In 1988, Epic Software decided to go back and do another version of Summer Games, only this time 
utilizing the techniques and tricks they had learned in the past five years of developing games. The game's Summer Edition was released initially for the Commodore 64, but was later ported to the Amiga. This meant better graphics and sound, especially on some of the newer 16-bit platforms. The controls were changed as well, utilizing more technique and less joystick waggling. One major change is this version was officially licensed by the Olympic Games. The list of events include Archery Pole Vault Uneven Parallel Bars Velodrome Cycling Rings Diving Hurdles And the Hammer Throw The graphics are fantastic along with the silky smooth animation. There is a wide variety in the events with different viewpoints all throughout. I for one really appreciated the updated controls because I know I broke more than a few joysticks playing summer games in track and field. Soon thereafter, the game's winter edition was released. Again, the graphics and animation are silky smooth with lots of humor and personality. The same control scheme from the game Summer Edition was utilized, which saved a whole lot of joysticks this time around. This is also officially licensed by the Olympic Games. The events include... Luge Cross Country Figure Skating Ski jump. Slalom. Speed skating. And downhill. While everything was turned up a notch for this release, the game did not sell as well as the previous iterations. This is due to the fact that the Commodore 64 was no longer the prime gaming platform it used to be. The computer was released in 1982 and it was finally starting to show its age. A lot of consumers had switched over to the NES by this point and had left the Commodore way behind. Epix decided to go back and revisit their most successful game with California Games 2. California Games 2 was the only game in the series that was not released for the Commodore 64. It was released for MS-DOS, Amiga, and the Super Nintendo. The events include Hang Gliding Jet Ski Snowboarding Bodyboarding And Skateboarding While the personality was there, something is just a bit off about this release. The events were okay to play, but some of the charm that was found in previous games was missing. The game sold close to 100,000 copies, but nowhere near the 300,000 the first game sold. While the game was initially developed on the Commodore 64, numerous conversions appeared as the series progressed. There were ports to the Amstrad, Spectrum, Atari Lynx, Sega Master System, NES, Atari ST, Amiga, Super Nintendo, and the Sega Genesis. If you fail on any of the events, you will notice little things that really make the game stand out. Check out this fail video and you'll see what I mean.
And that does it for the History of the Game series. My personal favorite would have to be either Winter Games or California Games. They are all still fun to play, especially with a group of people. If you like track and field style games, then you owe it to yourself to check this series out. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my little channel can grow. Thanks for watching.